I'm going to talk about voice. Who knows if I say voice what I'm talking about? Google Alexa. Uh, cool. So I brought her. Alexa, say hi. Hi, everyone. Happy to be in Denmark. I heard I should visit the Bug Museum in Mamu. Who here has talked off a device in the last year? So who here talked to a device in the last year? Last month? Last week? Today? <laughs> ah, okay, so it's a bit different. Well, let's explore a little bit what that is. Oh, and now we're connected. So I'm Martin Lentz Fitzgerald. This is my fifth new mass medium, Nat Mass, new channel that I'm talking about. I've done it for a long time, started in the web in the early 90s, did email, did mobile, did augmented reality. I had the first global platform with 44 million users, which I launched literally 10 years ago. Uh, I like to be early. And now I'm working on voice. Uh, voice is also a new channel, and for me, it's really, I can see the, the, the same things happening again, yet different because everything has its own path. But I really enjoy making sure that new, innovative, powerful things land well in the world, and that's always been my mission. Uh, like uh, you said, I work for Nodes Agency. It's a global company right now, over a thousand people, uh, where we deliver awesome apps, uh, websites with Sitecore, and since I'm working there, also do voice work. So we create conversational graphs for companies so that they can talk with their customers instead of just click, swipe, and type, I guess. Uh, so today I'll be talking about voice, so I can't help myself. I'll tell you why it's awesome and give you some numbers. But then I'll go dark and give you the nasty bits. And then I'll give you some help. So voice, uh, voice is the ultimate interface. We've been talking for 40,000 years. If we didn't talk together, we wouldn't sit here. We wouldn't have this awesome Rathus, if I say it correctly, with this awesome design. I'm really impressed. Uh, because we wouldn't be able to communicate. We wouldn't be able to build on each other. Dialogue, thinking. And so it's so logical, of course, that voice is the ultimate interface. And now it's possible that we can all do it. And there's a reason why we like it. If you think about those annoying typing interfaces, we're five times faster when we talk. We are so good at it. We, we don't even think about it, which is also an awesome thing if you try to design conversations. Because for the first time, you actually consciously have to do it instead of just me right now rambling on, which we all do, kind of. Uh, so it's faster. And since it's now going on for five years, and in the US, over 60 million of these smart speakers are sold and in use. Can you imagine that? Almost one in five. Here in Denmark, I gather it's not that popular yet. It has launched in last October, just as in Holland. But overall, people are jumping on it. It's the fastest growing medium ever. Globally, we have over two billion devices that can talk. So every Android device has a assistant in it. Every uh, Microsoft device has it. Every Apple device has it. Of course, Google created their own category. Imagine if you're making bikes and you come up with a whole new speaker thing and you say, hey, let's do that. And then within five years, you sold 100 million with daily usage. Can you imagine that? This is such innovation power <laughs> going on here. So that never happened before. And people uh, have this prognosis that it's going to be awesome, of course. Uh, the top, I'm colorblind, I call it blue, the top graph is the prognosis of the commerce part on top of mobile commerce. And think about it, mobile commerce, I mean, that's even still new. Yet on the other hand, who here has bought stuff with their mobile phone? See? And so buying stuff with your voice, it'll be very soon that that is possible. They're putting lots of effort in it. Um, there's this great model uh, uh, of early adapters, late majority, etc., etc. In Denmark, I believe that you're still in the innovation early adopter stage of voice. In the US and also in China, it's across the chasm. The chasm is the biggest thing. That's when your mother and your mother-in-law will get one. But that's where it is in the US. Literally, my wife's American and I have an American mother-in-law. She has a speaker. <laughs> so this is how fast it's going. There are several big players. The biggest ones are, uh, app, uh, sorry, are Google and Amazon. Uh, they each have their own skills or actions. That's what the website is called, the voice. Um, Amazon has 10,000 people working on this. 
Can you imagine that? 10,000 people. How many people work for the government in Arlos? 25,000. Sorry? 25,000. Ah, so four times that, and you have Alexa. Can you imagine that? I'm, I'm really bad at calculating. I just managed that one. Uh, so they are the big players. You have Siri, of course, by Apple. Bixby is the new one with Samsung. Bixby, by the way, very interesting because the people behind Bixby at Samsung are the original makers of Siri. So that's the first second generation voice platform. Uh, they don't have usage yet. They haven't really started promoting it yet, but it will be in all your phones, in all your TVs, from Samsung, of course, in all your fridges, your, your vacuums. And think about it. Why do we need a light switch? I'm really annoyed that I need a remote even for my TV. It's not necessary anymore. That's my world. And that will be soon your world. Your kids will laugh at you because you will be that generation that used buttons. Can you imagine that? Can you just imagine if you go there? It's, yeah, and, and, and our grandfathers were, and mothers were the ones without buttons. So we will be that little interbellum-like generation. Anyway, uh, hey Google. this is yesterday night. Open calculator. Open photos. Set a timer for 10 minutes. What's the weather today? What about tomorrow? Show me John Legend on Twitter. So this was last night at Google I.O. Get a lift ride to my hotel. Look how quick it is. Turn the flashlight on. Turn it off. Take a selfie. So they just announced lots of new voice stuff at Google I.O., the big Google event. Yeah, it's awesome. Look, it's almost as much as we are. <laughs> um, almost 75% of all their messages at Google I.O. was about voice and the assistant, conversational, etc. Uh, just at uh, beginning of the week, there was the Microsoft event, also lots of conversational stuff. All the big companies are on this because it's so logical to get on, that, on board with the first natural or the only natural interface. And like I said, it's going to disappear everywhere. So if you wonder what do people do, well, people ask for the weather. Alexa, what's the weather in Aarhus? Currently, in Pineapper, it's 11 degrees Celsius with cloudy skies. Pineapper is a city in Amsterdam. Alexa, stop. Alexa, what's the weather in Aarhus, Denmark? In Aarhus, Denmark, it's 5 degrees Celsius with cloudy <laughs> skies. Today, yeah. you can look anyway, for Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. Uh, do you know uh, Faulty Towers? Do you know, remember Manuel? So Alexa's a little bit like Manuel. He ignores you. He does hear you sometimes, but he still doesn't do what you ask him to. And if you're lucky, he does. And you would seem like a Nazi because you're shouting at him. <laughs> But uh, we'll get there. And as you just saw in the video, it's really going quickly, the developments. So people ask the weather, do the music. I do that every day. I've had one since the first beta with Amazon. I was lucky to get one five years ago. My family does it. And it's for us natural to do it all the time. And lots of people. And then it's going even further. So Google last year announced Google Duplex. Duplex is basically a service which will call for you to, for instance, the restaurant to do a booking. This was the first video of Duplex in the wild where a computer is calling this woman from uh, a restaurant to do a booking. Hello, Cafe Prague. Hi, I'm going to make a reservation for a client that gone from Google, so the call may be recorded. Can I book a table for tomorrow, please? Yes, at what time would you like to reserve? At 7 p.m. Okay, perfect. How many people? It's for two people. Okay, two people tomorrow at 7 p.m. What's your name? The first name is Anna. Anna, okay, thank you. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow, thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much, thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye. I see you tomorrow, bye-bye. She forgot she was talking to a machine. <laughs> but can you imagine that you booked your hair appointment through a uh, digital assistant, so hey Google, arrange a hair appointment with my favorite hairdresser. And then they call the hairdresser for you. Can you imagine that? 
that's going to be normal. In the US, this is publicly available on iPhone and Android already. It's, I don't know. It's, it's, I can't. I mean, the dynamics of people not using it, most of it, most, and then you have this. It's so everything at once. One of the biggest things why the adoption is going so quickly is because companies now have an in innovation muscle. They've learned to work in design sprints, they're working lean and agile. In the old days, you need to hire consultants to be, you know, uh, think out of the box. Now most companies can do this. And so therefore, the velocity of this adoption is so quick. As well as, of course, the big platforms who know how to introduce large technologies with so many facets of, of this, yeah, everything. Uh, so they're really quick. And we are now living in the, with the voice first generation. My twins, a five-year-old, tw switch off the lights and turn them on every day. I'm collecting Twitter's tweets from people who uh, tweet about their kids not being able to break their bike the way we do, but looking to talk to the bike. <laughs> hey bike, stop. And they wonder why it's not working. Yeah, why is that? I have another one where uh, the boy in the tent at the camping asks, like, uh, hey tent, lights on. <laughs> My kids, you know, if, if you look at kids, they understand the quickest, they adopt the quickest because they don't have any legacy. And there you see again how that uptake is so logical. So let's now go a little bit dark. Let's go Black Mirror, the scary bits. There's two things that I am worried about with voice. And the first one is, it's the reddest ocean ever. Who is familiar with the Blue Ocean Strategy? Oh, nice, yeah, hey, I have the book too. And yeah, it's, it's so simple, like if there's nothing and there's only opportunity, you can do anything. Well, with voice, it's the absolute reverse. Uh, all these big players, they own that channel. They have total control, total non-transparency, what they do, why they do it. They're all driven by money and not by good, not to help us really. That's not what they're, why they're here. So that is really scary if you think about it. So it's profit-driven. Their control is profit-driven. If they have to choose between you and a million income, who will they choose? Think about it. Who will they choose? Of course, they won't say it, but they will not choose you. And they won't work together. Why would Amazon Video work on Google? They don't have a reason to support each other. So screw you, user. Interoperability, it's not a thing for them. I mean, they might do it on the surface, but really it doesn't and won't work together because they don't have that opportunity. And they owe it to their shareholders not to do it well, only to spin it like it seems so. And non-transparent. What do they really do with all your conversations that are recorded? What do they really do? You don't know. And they will never tell. It's not audited. It's not transparent. We can't look into that organization. We're literally not allowed. And they won't do it by themselves because they have no benefit. And there's no checks and balances. Yes, you have those principles in Denmark. I remember that coming out last year. What happened with it? What kind of clout do those principles have? Yes, we can do good, but what kind of power do we have against the billions of cash that Apple has? And all the money, or all the power that literally they can buy, let alone all the operational power they have with politics and influence and stuff like that. That is really scary. So we can make all the principles that we want. Oh man, I'm going off, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and by the way, I'll share with you this deck so you can share it with everybody. Uh, but you can copy it too. <laughs> so man, I was making this and I was really getting worried. So what do we do? I mean, we will suffer from privacy abuse. Competitive services will be withheld or even canceled. Uh, I know Talpa really well. Talpa is the maker, for instance, The Voice of Denmark, probably a popular program here. Lots of TV shows, radio stations. And they are really afraid that Google will turn them off uh, on uh, Amazon uh, Alexa. Oh, that was my mail, probably, yes. Um, because these platforms have the power to turn off popular radio stations that are in use in five years for 50% through the assistant. And, and how do you go against that? Like I said, lack of interoperability. So they won't work together. I can't, if I have uh, Apple TV, I can't Chromecast my Apple TV. Annoying. And we will be exploited. There's no guard against that. And yeah, just think about it. The moment you right now pick up your phone 
You will be distracted by all the notifications. You can't do what you want. You can't do what you need. No, you're being exploited. Your attention, they, they've literally optimized that attention grabbing. And that's an exploitative platform currently, if you think about mobile. It sucks the life out of you. It literally does, despite, again, all these principles. And, you know, you have digital addiction. You have mental health issues. People are bullying. People are alone. Uh, breakdown of truth. Hey, look, hi, uh, UK. Hi, America. Uh, the bipolarity or the polarization, of course, of people. There's no real discourse anymore. Manipulation. And, of course, superficiality. Let's take a selfie. Uh, all big issues. And then there's a second one that I'm really worried about. Apart from the, the most reddest ocean ever. And that's manipulation. This is one that nobody really has looked at before. This is a new one. Really a new one. Do you know the scene from Mogi? I love it. So never before have so many conversations, voice conversations, be recorded. And what is a voice conversation? It's biometric data. If you listen to me, my voice, it's unique. And you can read my personality. You can even read if I have uh, certain diseases now. Companies are working on that. And never before on such a massive scale has that been recorded. So what is happening there? Well, just think about it. If you know me, and you would want to have something to do with me, or from me, you would use big words, show some energy, and I will get energy, and I will probably say yes. My colleague, Emil, he's Danish, by the way, he's very structured. So if you want to do something with him, you have to have a level voice, and you have to communicate in facts. And everybody has its own communication style. Do you recognize that? Everybody has their own profile, our own psychological profile. Big Five, MBTI, we all know them, Strength, or we, strength Finder. So the computer now can read what type of person you are. I use Crystal. Crystal, please look it up. It's really five for five years. I look, yeah, oh, look at that. Hanu, can you please say that? No, who works with Hanu? Oh, now that's another issue. So I looked up Hanu. Hanu tends to enjoy adventure and freedom with a high tolerance for risk and not much patience for rigid structures. Correct? Absolutely. So this is a machine that looked at him Look and judged him to be this without you ever filling every, anything out. And if I select, uh, I went to persuade you to take action, subject, big decision, you can always change your mind later, so I make it safe. So these are all the sentences the machine tells me to use to persuade you to do what I want. This is already out there for five years. I pay for this service, by the way. This is how I win deals, because I know who you are before I go in. And I prepared my, prepared my pitch. I used facts. Or used big words. Uh, IBM Watson, similar. Personality insights. Literally, this is code that you can just uh, use already currently in your own apps and, and, and services. This is me and all their uh, in, in an analysis based on my Twitter feed. So lots of companies are using profiling, personality profiling, uh, to m m make services better. So imagine with voice, it's not done yet, but it will happen. With voice, when you try to book your train ticket, some people will get a factual train ticket service voice, and the other one will get a really excited voice service, because that's how they will sell more train tickets, or toothpaste, or medicine, or anything else. So this is what I'm afraid for. How do we make sure that psychrometric manipulation tools will not be used in voice? Because this is a misuse that will be bigger than Cambridge Analytica. Bigger. Bigger than uh, in the politics, or that have the bigger effects. That's scary. But there's hope. Okay, that was the scary bit. Whew. You can uh, take your hands off your ears if you were scared. Uh, so there is hope. She says that too. Who knows what this is? Tell me. The old internet. Yes, the old internet. Nice. This is the internet when I was born. Well, maybe later. 77. This is the internet in 77. And the internet is a great teacher for us because the internet is the biggest blue ocean ever of opportunity. Everything you do, I do, is made possible by this digital wave of opportunity that happened. The most impactful blue ocean. Over 35 years, all these possibilities 
were, were made with business, usage, innovation, prosperity. And that is awesome. So what can we learn from that? Well, they had some awesome organizations that made that all happen. They had the Internet Society. They had the Internet Engineering Task Force. Uh, for instance, you had all types of email from IBM, from DEC, and they made standards so all the emails would work together. They made sure that all the separate networks could peer and work together. So standards, uh, interoperability, peering, and it was all non-profit, multi-stakeholder, because everybody was working on the big same lofty goal to make it work together. So maybe we can do that as well with voice. Oh, and one thing, we're talking about the principles. There's a very nice organization, Center for Humane Technology. Originally, it was called Time Well Spent, if you heard it. They have an awesome TED Talk, and I met the founder a long time ago. And they want to reverse human downgrading by inspiring and realigning technology with humanity. Huh? Well, that's what I thought when I read their updated website. Well, practically, it comes down to this. So if you are measuring success in your company, by visits, swipes, transactions, and stuff like that. That's not right. Why don't you uh, grade yourself uh, with measuring positive contributions to people's lives? That's the way you should be measured. That's the way Lego should measure their employees. Not the amount of bricks. Are people from Lego here? I'm very Lego focused today. <laughs> But if you're a commercial company, what is the contra positive contribution to do to people's lives instead of your own net profit? That's what we want. And I know it's hard, it's, now it's a dream, but we can try and do that somehow. So myself, I started Project Silver a year ago. Project Silver is a consortium with Google in Holland, uh, with the largest insurer, with the government, um, with nodes. Uh, and what we try to do is explore how we can include and maybe even empower elderly people, or how they like to be called, older adults. Yes, I'm almost one of them. Uh, with voice, because voice, they are already the, the keyboardless uh, uh, generation, so they can get back on board, basically. And actually, now, uh, yesterday with Google here in Denmark, I explored it, so we'll be launching here as well. And we're launching services like if you buy one speaker, you'll get an extra one for your mom or your dad, including a helpline or a person you can ask who can help install it. Because we did research with over 3,000 uh, elderly people. One in five already uh, used talk to a device before. And they all like the social aspect, so you can just talk to people by talking to the device. You have somebody in the room, even though it's fake, they like that. Have reminders, get help easily if you're lying on the floor without that ugly alarm button on your neck. And all kinds of projects is what we're starting. So this is how we do inclusion. So I was thinking, what if we do this even better? What if we make a larger organization which is transparent, which is auditable, so you know what we're doing and why? which is multi-stakeholder with all these organizations we've seen today. Open government, so everybody can help govern. There's an open board. And you harmonize, you collaborate, etc., etc. So, today, I'm launching the Voice Task Group. Go to the website, voicetaskgroup.org, and you can see more about it. And it's a consortium to grow, to guard the potential of the Voice Channel. So, promote and guard. And it's non-profit, we work for interoperability, standard, safe usage, and inclusion. Because one, again, one of the most powerful things with voice is inclusion. It makes lots of groups of people, like blind, like elderly, we, who can now use tech again, who had a hard time in a very easy way. So I'm talking to Amazon, I'm talking to Google, I'm talking to large organizations, from media to, uh, uh, to get going on. It's still very early days. But hopefully, maybe next year I can come back and give you an update. And oh, no, it's not the floor. <laughs> so with that, I'd like to give one more quote for you. Uh, in a world dictated by the new for-profit voice channels, standards plus public checks and balances are vital to stay humane and have it grow to its full potential. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. So you want to build a, you know, you use the analogy of the World Wide Web Consortium, mm -hmm. the W3C. Uh, but I think there's a, there's a 
bit different from you know back in the eighties when the mm -hmm. was formed, yeah. and now because that was out of the academic world. Mm -hmm. So this is a totally different monster. So how the hell are you going to persuade Google, Facebook, the others? Because they, of course they want to talk to you. Exactly. But what about action? So I'm a little bit I'm a little bit worried here if uh, if you're too naive to be honest, Martin. Uh, what was the radical uh, radical ignorance? Thank you. Uh, that's me too. Radical ignorance, and, and uh, I can sit by and, and work and sell my customers uh, buy more Lego voice services, or I can do this, and I choose to do this. And uh, I know they do want to act. I know I've met the founder of Google, and uh, literally they're engineers who make awesome stuff with mistakes. And then if there's mistakes, they'll fix it. Yeah. Uh, Facebook is a bit different; they do it a little bit on purpose, but. Um, so they are willing to talk, they're willing to move. I mean, look at all the, on your f mobile phones, you, every, everybody now has a, a statistics about what kind of usage you have. And so there is movement, and that's what we're gonna capitalize on, and that's how we will get forward. And as long as we have this talk, I get the stage, as long as we all bound together and be smart and effective. I didn't put that slide up, but we're gonna use not the old school Geneva-like W3C movement organizations. No, we'll be agile. We will lean, we'll be smart. And uh, I did a similar thing very bit uh, in the early days of augmented reality, and they're willing to move, I've seen it. Mm. So uh, yes, there'll be a lot of talk and it'll be slow, but uh, just with, uh, with Project Silver, it took me a year to get now to people to put money where their mouth is and do these projects, buy one, get one free with elderly insta installation help, that's Google. Mm. And so they will move, I know that. So yes. That's a sincere motivation for doing this. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, yeah. fingers crossed, let's hope. You will manage this. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Okay, cheers. I'm wondering, GDPR, you were looking at European, yeah. how does that go together with the voice? Can we have our own voice recorded back in a database and then download it and say this was what I did when I was supposed to walk for one year and up to eight years? Yeah, you, can, you have access to everything you said to the machine. Literally, I can look at what, the, what kind of music the cleaner at my home asked for for using voice. And how my, why I have uh, 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 Sia in my playlist all of a sudden, if I go to Spotify, because she likes Sia. So you can del delete that, but even on a higher level, all these platforms are so well legally that of course they're compliant, of course they play with the, uh, by the rules. And of course they will explain to you that really they're good. But there's lots of gray area around that. And that's why I come up with that psychological, or the, the psychometric stuff, because that's stuff no legal entity, no government has ever thought about. So I'm keen to, to I don't know, uh, talk to, to the EU people about that too. And by the way, Project Silver is going to be sponsored or uh, funded by the EU to grow in Europe. So that kind of t level talks is what we need also to go past GDPR because there's more to do. And maybe just on one other note, the US is known and very successful in the Silicon Valley global platform plays. Well, I think Europe will be known to get things humane again, get things ethical. GDPR was one thing, let's move that forward. And that's also one of the reasons why I think that we might not do AI as big as China or quantum technology, but we will do the ethical part. We're not the old world for nothing. And, uh, yay. <laughs> <laughs>